Alright guys, so welcome to Crypto Pilipinas guys And Magandang araw lahat sa ating mga kapamilya, kapamilya kapuso Good morning to all our viewers Outside the country Alright Europe, America So magandang araw And today we have some Three news to discuss So Let's go to the first one Ethereum 2.0 is nearly ready for the launch, says Auditor. This article is written by Henry Leeds. All right. Okay, so... Auditor Quantstamp has vetted that Ethereum 2.0 tickle software and the software allows 2.0 stakers to participate in mining and it's important step toward a long-awaited protocol upgrade. So, the epic challenge to scale up Ethereum 2.0 or ETH 2.0 began in 2014. So far, it has been a game two steps forward and one step back. And this week brings Step Forward's smart contract auditing company Quantstamp Quantsta has concluded an audit of Tiku, a piece of software developed by Consensus that allows for the staking of Ether. And as a reminder, that a new ETH2 will use a proof of stake or POS rather than proof of work or POW, Consensus algorithm, which means the user will stake ETH rather than simply mine it. According to Quenstamp CEO. So Ethereum 2.0 is on track to deliver the phase zero in the very near future. So we are almost there. It's getting ready, the Ethereum 2.0 to stake. So we are no longer able to mine Ethereum 2.0, but we can mine Ethereum by staking our ethereum in the network so it requires about a minimum of 32 eth to mine ethereum so unfortunately as we proceed mixed signals unfortunately timeline for ETH to launch remains unclear once quant stamp announced comes just a week after an ethereum research said the deposit contract would not be out until mid-November. So Danny Ryan told the Bankless pod podcast that the smart contract which allows the stakers to stake Ether was still weeks away. So on the other setbacks have plunged each through late of late. In recent weeks, some testnets failed and validators dropped up the testnet. On October 18, 2020, Ethereum developer Ben Ed Edgington put the Ethereum Bacon's chain launch weeks after the smart contract smart contract launch. So in this way, the Quantstamp Quantstamp announcement seems somewhat of contradiction, or at least misleading. The fact that Tuco software this sound doesn't mean the smart contract is driving it's ready. Either way, the big Ethereum 2.0 phase 0 is the launch of the Bacon chain. The, this blockchain would allow the protocol transition from POW to proof of work to proof of stake. While allowing for sharding and efficiency boost that reduces the amount of work validators to do. This would still be only the first step. Bacon Chain's launch would not mean that Ethereum 2.0 is up running, and the devs still predict that the full rollout of the upgrade to happen in 2021. So, looking good. So, that's about it, guys. So, so, uh, the full rollout upgrade is, is expected to happen in 2021. So, probably somewhere in November or December, uh, Ethereum holders could maybe be allowed to stake if it 
it will be released in this year but the full roll rollout would be 2021 makes sense to me like in 2021 ethereum will be so bullish because ethereum holders will stake their coins and earn interest so still things are moving on the right direction for e2 at least regarding to the token staking the quant stamp auditing involved in the integration of the software to test its limits and capabilities quant stamp says tico pass enforcement of the consensus rules code resistances and the rewards and penalties management the firm said the code was of the highest quality the, the audit resol also resolves an issue of surrounding D D DDoS attacks, errors from failing out of sync and missing the validation logic, and the long planned projects help the impatient community inch towards a network capable of handling today's more crypto savvy world. So here's a tweet from Justin Drake. Loud and clear, the community wants phase zero genesis in 2020 not a day one late so it says here that the phase one would be expected to be released by justin drake in 2020 so probably by november or december not 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 yet final because it could happen also in 2021st so what vitalik buterin replied in a russian i don't know how to read that one so let's proceed. Meanwhile, ETH devs are tapping their watches on July 11th. Developer Just Drake tweeted that the community wanted ETH to by the end of 2020. Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Wonderkind, replied in apparently with some irony. The Russian phrase, not a step backward. So during the World War II, it was the, sna the name of the Soviet Army policy which retreating scared or deserting soldiers would shot would be shot by their own comrades so that's about the news guys and the uh, ethereum 2.0 and let's go to the next news so this one is really interesting by cryptobriefing.com so hackers drain d5 protocol harvest finance 24 million bucks what in the world So it says here, key hackers obtained USDT USDC stable coins worth $24 million from Harvest Finance Stable and BTC Pools. The harvest of governance token farm plummeted 60% following the revelation of the hack. $400 million is total liquidity have been drained out of the Harvest Finance as liquidity providers flee the platform. Wow, this is really, really bad. So, as we continue, 24 million DeFi hack involvement harvest finance has exposed the vulnerability of the in entire DeFi ecosystem. Economic exploit the harvest finance. Working as a yield aggregator, harvest finance provides liquidity to the other DeFi pools, obtain gains liquidity providers. Hackers allegedly uh, leverage the mechanism of curves Y pull for their attack. Harvest Finance tweeted, <clears throat> "We are workingly, we are working actively on the issue of m mitigating the economic attack on the stable and BTC polls, and we will update in this thread the real time soon, as soon as additional details are available." And they retweeted it again on October 26, 12.43 p.m. The economic attack was performed throughout the curb wide pool, stretching the price of the stable coin in the curve out of proportion, depositing, depositing large amount of assets throughout the harvest.
To protect users, we pull that wipe, pull, and BTC curve strategy funds to the bulb. Reportedly, the arbitrage manipulation using $50 million flash loan enabled the attackers to stretch the price of the stable curves Y pool and the hackers then use the stable coin and the BTC pools on the harvest finance to obtain the greater amount of stable coins in exchange of the highly priced token on curve so that's how they manipulated the uh, the harvest finance in the less than seven minutes the attackers drained 24 million from the harvest liquidity and a total of volume trading curves USDT and USDC from shut from 10 million to 2.7 billion the exploit and the nature of the attack has been discussed in detail in the academic paper by researchers from Imperial College London it's outlined how to use flash loans to manipulate the fry the price of the token Pierce and drain liquidity on the DeFi pools you go out yeah but you can't play here daddy's doing something come on you'll be quiet new DeFi hack every day so there is start of similar between the harvest finance hack and previously 15 million deeper attack on eminence so well the 50 the 50 percent amount of imminence this time the harvest hackers sent 10 percent of the total hack to the ETH developer uh deployers address this raises suspicions around the signature move of the single entity or trend adopted by developers the attackers sent some funds back because they're such nice people if this isn't strong evidence that the attacker and the devs are the same then i don't know what is a tweet from ricardo spagni so reply replied from the harvest finance the attacker sent back two to almost 2.5 million dollars to the deployer in the form of usdt and usdc this will be distributed to the affected depositors pro rata using the snapshot and as reported earlier, the anonymous developers of Harvest Finance have been raised several red flags. And the anonymity of the DeFi is also adding developers' advantage who goes untraced and richer in crypto money from the hacks. So that is one of the that is one of uh, the risks, guys, in investing in DeFi projects that is not really, really secure network. So that's why Ethereum is the most reliable DeFi projects because it's like they keep on updating their network and Ethereum is not just a uh, uh, easy easy prey. Ethereum is really really uh, built by a lot of developers and programmers to protect the network from getting hacked. So this is what happens when uh, a weak, weak security, they can, uh, the hackers could produce an attack to, to, to these DeFi projects and some people could easily lose money. So that's why choosing a right company in the right network, strong network, strong co company is one of the best ideas and for me is ethereum DeFi is one of the strongest that's why ethereum is really really solid and appreciated by most developers so that's why i don't really uh it's not really a financial advice to just engage into the new hypes in the market by social media and others because Investing in crypto guys is using your own research or doing your own research. You need to to check the strength and the quality of their network. That's one. It's not only the price but also the partnership of 
who are partnering with these developers and the network. So there's so many aspects to see before you invest or you put your money, even if it's just a little amount of investment. Kahit maliit lang yan, but you need to be responsible so that you are not going to lose your money. Okay, so that's it guys, and I hope that you enjoy this content. So we'll just have two contents uh, for today. And, alright, so Crypto Pilipina signing out. Uh, we are bullish long term on Ethereum. And we don't know what's going to be the all-time high price because in the last bull run, Ethereum went from $3 to 50,000 pesos or $1,000 per share. So, we don't know how much increase or growth in this coming year, 2021, would it be. Alright, so, uh, this is, by the way, this is not a financial advice. This is all for entertainment and educational purposes only. God bless. Keep safe. Signing out.